Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the Association of the United States Army's 2019 Conference and Trade Show, the number one gathering of U.S. Army leaders from around the world gathering here in Washington, D.C. Our, our coverage here is sponsored by General Motors Defense, Bell, L3 Harris, and Leonardo DRS. And we're here at the General Motors Defense stand to talk to Matt Scrace, who is a program engineering manager uh, at the company as it uh, uh, works to expand its defense uh, footprint. Matt, uh, thanks very much. Congratulations on the vehicle. 18 weeks for you guys to develop an inf infantry uh, squad vehicle. Tell us a little bit uh, about what the idea was, what the requirement is, and uh, what you guys are trying to demonstrate. First of all, thanks for having me, Vago. This is the General Motors Defense Infantry Squad Vehicle Submission. Uh, as you can see, it uh, meets the objective that the customer is looking for, for a nine-passenger open cockpit, easy ingress, easy egress to carry troops across the open battlefield very swiftly and easily. The vehicle is heavily based on the commercially available Chevrolet Colorado ZR2 program. It uses approximately 70% of production components, commercial off-the-shelf components, uh, with some special products offered by Chevrolet Performance Parts, specifically suspension components. Um, that's, that's right, because you've taken this from some of your race-proven vehicles and incorporated it uh, into the military design. That's right. We essentially took the racing suspension that's used uh, as a Chevrolet racing vehicle and incorporated into this vehicle to meet some of those objectives for a smooth ride, off-road mobility, and high motivity. Um, and 18 weeks is an extraordinarily short period. Uh, talk to us about how you guys design an all-scratch vehicle in 18 weeks. So we really built it based off the requirements the customers are searching for. We used uh, tools that we have within General Motors to look at occupant packaging, efficient uh, usability from a forward visibility, e ingress and egress standpoint. So again, this vehicle uses high performance racing suspension. You can see we use Multimatic dynamic suspension spool valve dampers, as well as jounce shocks front and rear to mitigate those loads that you see in off-road high speed environments. The, the, the vehicle also uses a very lightweight rollover protection system uh, for the roll cage, so that greatly reduces the height of the center of gravity in the vehicle. Moving along to the rear, we came up with a very creative solution for the rollover protection system. One of the requirements is the vehicle has to fit inside a Chinook helicopter, so we are able to fold down the rollover protection system so it fits inside the, the helicopter as needed. Uh, the vehicle is also able to be uh, slung lift from a Black Hawk helicopter using lift rings that are externally mounted on the roll cage. So the entire focus has been to meet the objective of 5,000 pound curb weight as the, uh, as the number one priority for the vehicle. So every stone was turned over to look at mass reduction on the vehicle. And I'm happy to say we meet that objective. We have strengthened the suspension system, but essentially it uses a production Colorado ZR2 uh, frame modified to accept our body, as well as the uh, best in the desert racing components offered by Chevrolet Performance Parts. And what power plant are you guys uh, using? Because I know that gas mileage is something that's very important for the Army as well. This vehicle exclusively uses a 2.8 liter diesel Duramax engine, as well as a six-speed automatic transmission. Uh, and uh, you guys have uh, prided yourself on doing um, a lot of uh, sophisticated battery and fuel cell work. Last couple of shows uh, has been uh, the Colorado uh, with some of with hybrid uh, power. How easily can you retrofit hybrid power to a vehicle uh, like this? Because I know that that's something you guys are working on as well. The ZR2 uh, hydrogen fuel cell project is, a, is a, I'll say, a separate work stream, right. uh, separate project from a technology demonstration standpoint. This vehicle was specifically built to uh, address the objective that the Army is asking for. Uh, so the future, uh, I'll say, is open. We can, do, uh, we can do exercise many options for this vehicle. Uh, but right now we are purely focused right. on winning the production contract for this. And uh, tell us uh, what's next and who else you guys are competing with for this order. The next phase of the program is we are contracted to uh, provide two prototype vehicles to the Army uh, November 5th. And uh, we'll compete against the, the, the other three, uh, the other two vendors, and uh, hopefully we'll win this contract. And what's the size of the contract ultimately, and when would, if you guys win, when's the first deliverable uh, supposed to be in the services hands? 
contract award size is 155 million and start of production will be Q4 2020. And for how many vehicles? 651 vehicles. Fantastic. Matt Scrace, who is uh, the program engineering manager uh, of the uh, infantry support vehicle at General Motors Defense. Matt, thanks very much. Best of luck uh, with the program. And I think it's incredible how quickly you guys uh, managed to put this together because um, I think you guys have a, a little bit of uh, uh, automotive capability over there at General Motors. Thank you.